Uh, so is, I guess, let's start here. Is anybody coming back that you anticipate off of IR? Nobody. Uh, you're practicing. You know, it wasn't, it's been on there. Isaiah is still practicing. We haven't brought him back, but he started practicing last week, and he'll be out there again today. How close was how close was he last week? I mean, I think once we, I mean, I thought he looked pretty good, but so as week goes, but obviously uh, where the plan was, I mean, we didn't. He wasn't going to be part of the forty-eight, so we, you know, we didn't take him off. And uh, with Kyle, do you anticipate him back today? Uh, yeah, he'll be back. Okay. We'll see how it goes all week with him. Hey coach, um, just was looking back at the, the uh, untimely pen penalties. Was there any common thread there, or uh, yeah, with the just like the untimely penalties, common thread? Do you think we all able to see anything, or just bad plays? Yeah, I'm gonna focus away? on the 49ers. You know, like every game, D led. There's a lot of things to to coach off of, um, things that we can do better. Uh, but our focus now is on the San Francisco 49ers. So nothing that's you, you concerned moving forward in that penalty area. Well, do you let again? We're going to focus on 49ers as we do every Monday. Um, I've said it a hundred times, and I'll say it again. But we always look to improve, uh, but we're focused on the San Francisco 49ers. With the 49ers and their defensive front, I mean, through the first five games, they're one of the best at stopping the mm -hmm. run. What, how do you, what have you seen them be able to do through the first five games in order to be that? Yeah, I mean, they, they do a great job uh, of getting people off track. They play, uh, it's a very physical front. They do a great job of, of blowing up double teams, blowing up uh, edges. Um, I think they, you know, we talk about a lot of, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of uh, people in this game that get attention, but there's a lot of coaches. Obviously, I've, I've got a soft spot for the lines of scrimmage, uh, but I think they got one of the best D-line coaches in football, and Chris Kacarek, and I think if you go back and you look at what success that he's had since he's been in San Fran, been pretty damn good, and so I uh, enjoy watching the way those guys play. We know we got our work cut out for us, but we're excited about the challenge. When you talk about them getting teams off track, I mean that's something that I feel like you've talked about over the course of the last week. Yeah. Like being better on first and second down, how much does that play into the conversations that you're having? A lot of it. Yeah, there's a lot of ways that people get you get off track. Um, you know, and a lot of it is some of the strategy. And okay, if you get a if you get a run and it's two yards, you know you're gonna get into an obvious pass situation. And those are the games within the games because when you're playing a front like this and you make it really easy on them and they're not, they're only thinking about one thing, it's a nightmare. So that's certainly, that's a credit to those guys and it's just sometimes that happens in the flow of the game. And then the other ones are the negative plays, whether they're the penalties, um, poor execution, tackle for losses, sacks, and then you're getting into too many third and 11 plus and uh, more times than not, the odds are against you. And when you're doing it on a really good front like this, that's when they get you in a bind, and that's what they've done most of the season to a lot of offenses. He talked about when he was here about how you try to get the, the defensive linemen running sideways, um, outside the numbers and so forth, um, and attacking defenses that way. Um, is that a, you know, are they still doing that? Is that part of uh, the I, I mean, I think that's pretty common. D-led, you know, everybody's got the, the, the different cliches, like make them defend every blade of grass or, you know, what all those stuff. What they do a good job of, and I think Kyle does a really good job of, is he's evolved. I think a lot of conventional wisdom is thinks that you're going to turn it on. It's going to look like, uh, you know, Clint Portis and Terrell Davis and the yeah, Alex Gibbs and Gary Kubiak and Mike Shanahan stuff. Like any good coach, which he is, uh, like a lot of guys, they evolve. They run some really good gap schemes. They run a lot of good gun runnings. They do a really good job with their motion, um, and they got some really good players. So, like every good coach, they evolve. If you think you're looking at the 1999 Denver playbook that uh, Frank Bush has for us, that's not what this is. And that's a credit to Kyle, and, and uh, he's a really good coach. But uh, they run multiple schemes. Um, we got to make sure we, we, you know, they've got Debo Samuel, George Kittle, Ayuk. I mean, they got good, really good players. And Juice Check, I mean, they, it's a, it's a good challenge. It's a, there's a reason they've been in the Super Bowl and they went to the NFC Championship game. And the, um, could you discuss the use of Debo, how they try to deploy him? And yeah, the, I mean, he's trying to get the ball in his hands in multiple different ways. Uh, so, um, like I said, he's a very good run after catch. He, uh, I'll give him the highest compliment I can give him. It may not mean much to him. He's, a, he's the 
total football player, complete football player, put it that way. Uh, other than probably playing left tackle, I think he could play most positions on the field on offense or defense. Maybe not three technique or nose, but I'm sure he'd probably try it. I don't know him that well, but the way watching the, the tape, he probably would give it a go. When you were hired coordinators, what were the factors that you were looking for? What were the important, the most top of the line things that you were looking for? In what regards? What, what, is this? Quality, what qualities? I mean, what, what sort of? We'll have these uh, conversations in the and I prefer to talk about 49ers. If you're, whatever story or whatever narrative you're trying to investigate or, or write about, I'm happy to help you, but I prefer to stay on track with the San Francisco 49ers and the Atlanta Falcons, and our football team in this game. I, I studied this uh, Debo thing last year where they were saying the, the it basically turns into a 31. Uh, with a lot of power, and that's where they were getting the mismatches and stuff. So that just speaks to the versatility with how they try to attack people. It depends on what scheme they're trying to attack and what teams are trying to do to them. I mean, like I said, they, they can give you multiple looks. I think they're pretty good at the gap schemes. Uh, they can motion them in the backfield. They can line them up back there. They can hand the ball to them on, again, multiple schemes, whether they're gun runs, toss it to them, um, you know, the – me the, the most comical completion in football is that little lob yeah, <laughs> pass yeah. on the jet sweep motion. I mean, yeah. he can do it all. Whether well, that counts for a pass or not, that's a debate, Josh, for another day too. Um, I don't think Marino and Elway got the same little stat pad and credit for it, but it is what it is. It's all over college football and people using the NFL. Um, but just a terrific football player. He led good route tree too. I know how to get open, hard to press. I could go on and on and on. What goes into your decision process in terms of ch deciding to challenge a player or not? In terms of what? In terms of like the how that goes from after a play's over. Yeah, or something you example see. of a question of a play that was challenged or not challenged. No, I'm, more, I'm, more gen I'm talking more generally. So you're like in the Josh that. approach, right? Writing a story about challenges. We can we can set up time and talk about that another fact. But it, in terms of what? Is well, there I'm something sorry, going like on the, that you the, want me to? The quickness of it, like how that goes, like do you have somebody in your ear saying, hey, look at this, do you, because obviously you're calling plays too, especially on offense. I'm just wondering how that goes, how that works for you specifically. Yeah, and I, like, like when D-Lad asks about scheme or uh, rotations, we keep that stuff in-house. Uh, there's a lot of different processes I've been a part of, but again, if you tell me what relevant that is to this game, I'm happy to answer it. Is there Something specific? No, no, there's oh. nothing relevant okay. to this particular game. Just All something right. little, little thoughts. Okay. How is the way Grady Jarrett is playing affecting what you're able to do elsewhere defensively? Yeah, he's having a terrific season. I, um, you know, he's one of those guys, the longer I've been around him, the more fortunate I feel I am to be able to coach a guy like Grady. Uh, he's rare. Same thing Dabo told me when I talked to him and I got this job. So if you're going to start a program, that's the guy you started with. And I know a lot of people say a lot of things and fluff things up, but that's a very true statement. I think it's impressive. Um, guy does gets a new contract, and I don't know if there's anybody working or playing harder than he is. He plays multiple spots for us. One of the best leaders I've ever been around. Uh, he's having a terrific season. He can play in multiple spots and understands how to set people up. Pass rush, uh, knows how to take his chances in the run game. Uh, playing really, really good football for us right now, Josh. Again, he's having a really good year, Scott. How is uh, Jimmy G playing for them after um, – Jimmy's won a lot of football over. games. Again, I've never worked with him. i got a ton of respect for him. Mm -hmm. There's no flinching in him in the pocket. Um, guy finds a way to win a lot of football games. Mm -hmm. So, ton of respect for him. Obviously, he can get rid of the ball quick, get a quick delivery, tougher than hell. And he's won a lot of games. When it comes to running back check – to checking down the running backs and passing plays, how, how does that – work for Marcus. Is that available to him on every play? Is there – There's is, not a play in football. Like, right. like no, if you, I, I mean, I, Jesus I, Christ. I like, come on. Like, I'm you got to get you a high school playbook. Yeah. Like, it depends. What's the scheme? They, 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 they bury the back in there. What coverage are they playing? Like, what's the protection? Like, not to – I'm not trying to be patronizing, but that's such a generic question. Look, if you're playing zone and drop four-man pass rush and you're in soft zone, usually the check downs are there. That's in any offense. If we can go to Flower Branch High School and they can probably do that. So people go in there and they pressure you and they bury your back. I, I don't know an offense, literally probably in high school. Maybe there are. Or maybe this is, you know, I shouldn't say that with like, I'd say 90% of offenses from Pee Wee football or D-Lake can tell you about, uh, what's your team name? Marcus 
Smyrna Spartans. They probably have some kind of flare control or check down. <laughs>